Hello and welcome back to the McCall's 8255 Sew Along. Today is our last day of sewing together. It is bittersweet. If you have been following along up until this point, then you have a 90% completed garment. All we have left to do are the sleeves. And if you're following along in the workbook, um, then you know day four is dedicated to the arm side and the sleeves, whether you're doing the sleeveless version or any version of the sleeve short sleeve, three quarter sleeve or long sleeve. We are gonna tackle that today. So without further ado, let's get to making our sleeves. So exciting. So you should have basted your lining and your main fabric all around the arm size so that they don't come, so they don't separate and shift and act all weird when you go to put the sleeve on, okay? That's the only prep work you need to do like on the actual bodice. On the sleeve itself, we obviously have a few options for sleeves. Where's the pattern cover? Here we go. So we have A, which is what I'm making, right? Yes, <laughs> it's been so long, um, which is a little short sleeve that has some gathers at the top. We have B, which is like super gathered. We have D, which is a long sleeve with no gathers. And then if you're making C, at this point, you just attach your bias binding. So. It's gonna be similar construction for everyone. The order is the same. What you do up here is the only thing that's gonna be different. And then obviously how long your sleeve is, is gonna be different. But everybody should be able to follow along no matter which sleeve you are making. So our first step is to gather the sleeve. We have double notch here. This always indicates the back of your sleeve. Single notch here always indicates the front of your sleeve. Always, always, always in big four. I love that they do that because that makes it so easy when the sleeve kind of looks symmetrical, but it's not, um, nor should it be. So this guy here, these dots here are going to be your shoulder seam. And then these are going to match up with notches that are on your bodice. Okay. Um, is that it? Oh, and then a one inch hem we have down here as well. So First step is going to be to put in your gathered stitches. So we're gathering from the small dot all the way through this small dot, all the way through this small dot. And I've recently started doing my gathering stitches. I don't know if you guys saw this hack. It kind of went around the internet for a little while, a few months ago. But you start your gathered, you start your basting stitch, your gathering stitch um, on one end, you go all the way around, pivot and like square it off and then come back this way. So it's all one technical stitch. That way you don't run the risk of your gathering stitches coming out, which is so annoying. So I've been doing that lately. I have a love hate with it, but mostly a love. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today, um, gathering that. And then before we gather them up and before we move on to step number 17, this is my little hack that I've been doing, gosh, for years now, but I like to pre-press my hems. So while they are still flat, I will take my little hem gauge. This is a one inch hem. So I will measure two inches above the raw edge and put a little mark there all the way around the hem. And that's because if we were to mark at one inch and then you go to turn it up, you can't see your mark anymore. And so that was always super inaccurate. So I do it at two inches. I'm just going to come up here, press it up once till it meets that marking I just made. And then I'm going to turn it under and get our finished hem that way. Okay, so just pressing, not sewing, then we are gathering and um, stitching the underarm seams together all over at the machine. I'll show you okay, that. Okay, so I have my sleeve pre-pressed. So we just have the little creases in there. Nothing has been sewn, it's just pressed and those will hold themselves in place and make it easier for us to make an accurate hem once the sleeve is like a round tube. All right, so we've got basting stitch set. We are going from the small dots. Did I not transfer those? Oh, come on. I did not. So we're just going to guess. <laughs> Hopefully you transferred yours. I've got this at seven eighths of a seam allowance. Dropping my needle, not back stitching, nothing. 
and just coming around, around to the other side, to the other um, small dot. Okay, then leave your needle down, turn this, pivot 90 degrees, and now you're sewing toward the raw edge, like two stitches maybe, and then pivot again. And now you're sewing with this, uh, the stitch line you just made at the edge of your presser foot. That's gonna be roughly three eighths, half an inch, something like that. Okay, pull this out, nice long tail. And then, oh, come on. and then when you go to pull this up, this side is anchored down and so your gathers won't come out the other end. You know, you don't have to be super careful about that and you can get like a really nice gather. This is perfect for actual gathered sleeves and not necessarily sleeves that are eased in, but something where you want like a really good strong gather. So we're pulling up from the bobbin, both threads. And see how it won't come undone? It just anchors in on the other side. Okay, so this is our cutie little gathered sleeve. Isn't that great? Oh, she looks so cute. All right, so now we undo the creases in the hem and we're going to sew the um, underarm seam. Now, I've been making a lined top, so I have not had to serge a single thing, but this will be a raw edge. So I can either serge this, which is what I'm gonna do, because I already have white serger thread ready to go. Um, or you can do a French seam also, which would be really nice. So pick your poison. And then look how cool this is. Because we pre-pressed our hem, all you do is, um, imagine this is serged. Imagine the seam we just sewed is serged. And then all of this gets pressed up or turned up really into place and the little creases will hold the hem. So we don't have to go to our iron and like futz with it now that it's like this little tube thing. Isn't that great? So I'm going to serge and then sew my hem. All right, now repeat all of this for the other sleeve and then I'll meet you back at the cutting table. Okay, so now we've got our top and our two sleeves and we need to attach these. I'm gonna show you one and then obviously we repeat for the other side. So remember how I showed you how to know where the front and the back of the sleeve is? So we've got the back with the two notches and the front with the single notch. We need to turn our garment inside out and we are gonna stick the sleeve in, matching the underarm seam with the side seam, right? You slip that in like that, and then you double check. Do I have the back of my sleeve touching the back of my garment? If so, carry on. If not, then you need to switch these out um, so that your other sleeve, whoops, your other sleeve goes in here instead. Um, but I think I just guessed and had it right. So the sewing gods are loving me in that way today. And I'm gonna pin at all of the notches to start. So underarm seam, then just pivot around. We've got this little notch down here. We've got this notch that marks the start of our gathered stitches. And then I'm gonna skip the shoulder and then do the other side the same way I just did. So we're gonna meet up at the shoulder. Yeah, I pretty much had that spot on. If you need to adjust your gathering stitches, this is when you would do it. Okay, so 
So now we come to our shoulder and we're trying to find that notch at the top of our sleeve, which is right here, okay? And then that gets pinned in. And at this point, you just wanna zhuzh, zhuzh it up so that this, the gathers are distributed as evenly as possible. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put one more pen in here. And then we're gonna go to our sewing machines and stitch all the way around this armhole and then also serge it. And then apply the other sleeve. Okay, sleeves are in and they're really, really cute. So a couple of things you need to go put on a TV show, sit out by the pool, whatever you wanna do, um, and spend some time removing your stay stitching from the bodice and then removing your gathering stitches from the sleeve. And I wanna show you, hopefully you can see the difference. This one I did, right? Can you see how like cute and puffy and like perfect that one is? And then this one, because the gathering stitches are still in there, it's just a little bit more sad. So go ahead, remove those. They should come out really easily. And you guys, our little tops are done. Well, how do you feel? You have finished McCall's 8255. We've sewn it together. It's been so fun. And I hope you love your tops. I will be back on Monday, this very next coming Monday, to do a reveal. I'm going to model it for you guys, show you how I'll style it, you know, all of that great stuff, and kind of give you a bit of a pattern review like I typically do on garments that I make. I hope you will post yours to the internet as well, <laughs> whether that is Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, wherever you post photos, I hope you'll do that and that you will tag me so that I can see it. I have had a blast chatting with you guys this week, either in the comment section of the video or if you're a hem cider doing our live virtual chats. Um, like I said, I hope you love your top. I loved sewing with you and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.